Hi, this is Hidechi, and we're going to start this part two of my shogi lessons in English. And in this part two, I'll give you many shogi exercise problems for you to solve and let you practice on shogi tactics. This part two won't be so well structured as the part one. I'm just going to present many, many problems that I think are good problems, which I found in shogi books, magazines, website, etc. So maybe I'll give you problems rather randomly, one after another, but at least I'm going to make the theme of each problem consistent through one video. So today I'm going to do a video on very, very basic pawn tactics, and I'll give you five or ten seconds of pause before I show you the answer to each problem. So try and think to find the correct move there. If you need more time, just go ahead and pause the video. So this is the first exercise. Find a good move here. So the answer here is simple. It's pawn 2d. After he took it, he recaptured by the rook. Well, if white didn't do anything about this position and live that way, your next move would be definitely pawn to 2c, and you can take either of this bishop or the gold, right? So, at this position. White will play pawn to 2c, and now rook falls back to 2h. And now let's see what happened. Now, when you compare this position to the original position of this problem, the only difference here is whether the pawn is here or here, right? And in the original position of this problem, it was your turn to play, but now it's White's turn to play. So actually, what you did is. You pick up the pawn from here and just put it to here in one move. So you've used the opportunity to make your move for bringing the pawn from here to here, and well, making this pawn exchange, especially on rook's file, gives you three advantages. One is that you can have a pawn in hand. So, for instance, maybe you can drop it to here. Or on the other files, and uh, the second is now that your rook is aiming directly at your opponent's camp. So, if only this gold moves, you can promote the rook. See, and also the third thing is that now other pieces can develop. Along rook's file. So basically, if you have a chance to make pawn exchange, probably you should do it. All right, now another example. At this position, let's suppose he played silver to 4b instead of dropping the pawn to here. So what is your next move here? Well, some of you might thought it's pawn to two c, but this is not a good move. The bishop can easily go back, and nothing happens. And what is even worse, maybe you lose this pawn because White can kick the rook away, and then block it with the pawn, and then take it. So dropping the pawn to 2c is not a good move here. Well, a good move here is just to take your rook back to your camp, and at this position, now White must drop the pawn to 2c. So what would you play if he doesn't block it and left it that way? Find a good move here. Well, you know it's not the pawn to 2c. Right. Well, the answer is drop pawn to two d. This tactic is called a dangling pawn. A dangling pawn is a very powerful tactic because it threatens this pawn promotion in your next move. But actually, White has no means to prevent this pawn from promoting. All right. Now, just check if you're able to see broadly the whole board. 
let's say you push the pawn to 2e and here what if he didn't defend this square and just push this pawn are you gonna go with the pawn exchange here well don't always make sure you see the whole board after the rook captured it your rook gets skewered so always be careful alright another example what is a good move here yeah it's the pawn exchange pawn 2d pawn takes and rook recaptures and after he draws pawn to 2c where would you let the rook default to well one option is take it back to 2h but well then white gets an opportunity to make pawn exchange right so a good option here is to take the rook back to 2f defending this square so if you compare this position to the original position of this problem instead of just moving the rook and protecting this square you've made the pawn exchange and also protected this square so it's like you did two things in only one move alright another example let's suppose you want to bring your silver to here preparing for this attack what is the best way for you to bring the silver to here are you going to simply bring it by two moves like one and two well actually that's not the best way here so find a good move here well the answer is dropping the pawn to 3e this tactic is called opposing pawn after he took it you retake by the silver white will drop the pawn to 3d and then you move back to 2f now see what happened it's as if you brought the silver from here to here only by one move right alright find the best move here here you have three pawns in hand you're gonna learn many pawn tactics in this problem so read the following five moves the answer is pawn 2d yes opposing pawn and after it's taken well you don't take it with the rook of course it's gonna be back to its original position and it's white's turn to play it's like you've just passed your turn to play so after white's pawn took it the next move would be pawn drop to 2e we call this tactic joining pawn and what are you gonna do after he took it well it's pawn to 2d dangling pawn well at this position you're threatening rook takes 2e followed by pawn promotion but actually white has no way to prevent those moves here so you've succeeded in bridging the enemy's camp only by pawns now you see how important it is to learn pawn tactics right all right how about this one well this one is easy you just drop the pawn to 2c it's an opposing pawn after he takes it you retake by the silver and also uh, if white left it this way and did nothing about it you just go ahead and promote the pawn and then promote the silver so you can break the opponent's front line anyway find the best move here the answer is pawn to 3d this tactic is called striking pawn or sometimes we call it focus pawn when two or more opponents piece can take it and well you see this square is the head of opponent's silver 
and also diagonally forward from opponent's gold. And this kind of square is a weak point to white because after he took it by the silver, the silver's dead because he can't go back. And also, if he took it by the gold, also captured because he can't go back. So actually at this position, you can take either of this silver or the gold by only dropping the pawn. You see, pawn tactics are so powerful. Alright, that's all for today. Take care and I'll see you next time.